Hi, and welcome to another of my YouTube videos. Today, I'm going to show you how you can use Kafka Connect to stream data from Kafka to Elasticsearch. So we're going to use Kafka Connect, which is a framework. It's part of Apache Kafka. If you want to know more about it, check out my video from Zero to Hero with Kafka Connect. It's a recording from Kafka Summit online. I'll link to it in the show notes here, and it should be on screen right now. And whilst you're at it, make sure you subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I've got about using Kafka Connect to get data from Kafka into a database, Kafka to S3, and so on. But today, we're going to use Kafka Connect to get data from Kafka into Elasticsearch. So let's start off simple. We're going to put some data into a Kafka topic. All the instructions that I'm going to show you here, they're on GitHub. So I'll put the URL in the show notes as well. It's all on the uh, the demo scene, uh, Confluence repository. You can go through it. You can try the demo for yourself. You can see step by step exactly what I'm doing. So what we've got is uh, Docker Compose. And we're going to make sure that the stack is running. So Docker Compose, PS. And we can see that everything's running there. OK, that's good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to double check that uh, KSQL DB is up. Because we're going to use KSQL DB, it's part of Confluent Platform, it's source available, it's Confluent Community licensed. And we're just going to use this as an interface for easily getting data in and out of a Kafka topic and also managing Kafka Connect. If you'd rather not use it, you don't have to. You can use Kafka directly, you can use Kafka Connect directly, they've got their own APIs. And you can configure it using the REST API with Kafka Connect. You could use Confluent Control Center if you wanted to. However you do it, the base API is the same. It's a part of Apache Kafka. You can just configure it in different ways. As I say, I'm going to use KSQL DB just because it's kind of much easier. So let me show you this. I'm going to copy the uh, command into here. I'm going to start at KSQL DB. And whilst that's running, uh, we're going to create ourselves a topic. I'm going to create ourselves a topic in KSQL DB by creating a stream. So this isn't a talk about KSQL DB. If you'd like to know more about KSQL DB, check out this video, which I'll link to on the screen now. And that goes all into kind of like what KSQL DB is. At this stage, we're just using it as a kind of a layer for creating and managing topics and putting some data into it. So I'm going to create a stream in KSQL DB, which is basically just a Kafka topic. So this one here, test01, which has got a schema. It's got some fields in it. So this stream, Kafka, uh, sorry, this stream called test01, it's going to create ourselves a topic. It's got one partition. And if we say show streams, we can see we've got this stream here. And I can describe it because it's got a schema. I can say describe this. And you'll notice we've got a schema here of two different columns, an integer and a varchar. We've also got the key because Kafka matrices are key value pairs. And it's also got a time. It's got metadata within it as well. So whilst it, we've only created a schema of two fields, there's actually four available to us. You've got the timestamp, which is part of the metadata. You've got the key, which is part of how Kafka stores data, it's keys, and it's values. And the value has got a schema within it of those two separate columns, call one and call two. Let's put some data into it. We could use a producer API. We could use the console producer. I'm going to use KSQL DB because it's quicker. Insert into here. So we're going to insert values for the row key and the two fields. And we're going to insert another one now. OK, so we've created a topic with that create stream command up here. And we've populated the topic using this insert into. If you don't quite believe me, check this out. Show topics. We've got a topic called test01. And I can say print test01 from beginning. And it dumps out the contents of that particular topic. So this is just a consumer against the topic. OK, so you can see here you've got the row time, which is that metadata timestamp I was talking about. You've got the key here, and then you've got the value. So we've got a Kafka topic with some data in it. I've populated it using KSQL DB just because I find it easier. You can populate your Kafka topic however you would like. Now let's get that data from Kafka into Elasticsearch. So to do that, we're going to use Kafka Connect. And we're going to create ourselves a connector like this. So let me clear my screen and paste this in here. So we're going to create a connector. It's going to use the Elasticsearch Sync Connector. Here's where Elasticsearch is. And then here's a couple of other bits that we're going to discuss as we go through this tutorial. So we specified the topic there, and we've created a connector. Now here, I'm using KSQL DB to control Kafka Connect. 
But in the background, this is actually just making a REST call down to Kafka Connect itself. We've got a Kafka Connect worker running. I could just as easily run a REST call myself directly against it. It's just easier in KSQL DB. Enough of KSQL DB already, you get the idea. You can use it, you don't have to use it. It's Kafka Connect under the covers that we're interfacing with. Show connectors. We can see we've got a connector here and it's running. So that means we can head over to Elasticsearch and actually check out the data. So I'm just going to use the Elasticsearch REST API. Um, at this point, we'll get onto Kibana later. And with that REST API, we're just going to go to Elasticsearch and we're going to say, show me what's in this particular index. This is okay. You've got two documents in your index. Here's the actual payload that you sent through. And then we've got some other stuff in here as well. So if you know Elasticsearch, you'll know that documents, which are what we've created here, we've created two documents. Documents have got an ID. So the ID that's come through here is not kind of like what we'd necessarily expect. Well, maybe we would. The ID that we've set here is actually based on the properties of the Kafka message. So it's made up of the topic, the topic partition, and the offset. It's a unique identifier for that message from that Kafka topic. So we can see here we've got test zero one is our topic and it comes from partition zero, there's offset one and there's offset zero. So this is an important thing to understand about the connector because we can use it in different ways. If all you want to do is take data from a Kafka topic and just append it continually to an Elasticsearch index, then leaving the key like this is probably fine. And the way it's set is this setting up here. This key ignore is true. So what this means is ignore the key of the Kafka message and just create our own based on this topic, partition, offset, um, uh, triplet. We don't always want to do that. And let me show you why. Let's go back to our topic and let's put some more data into it. We're going to create ourselves another message. Okay, so it's got a new key. So we've got a row key of Z. We've had X, Y, and now we've got Z. Now we're going to create another message which has got a new value for the existing key. So we inserted Y before, we can see we've got uh, Y there, and we insert it. And what we can do is we can actually select from this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, set the offset back to the earliest. So with case equal DB, you can query from the beginning of a topic or the end of a topic. So we're gonna say query from the beginning of the topic or the beginning of the stream rather. And then we can say select the row key and column one and column two from test01, commit changes, just show me the first four messages. It says here are the first four messages in your stream. So here are the first two that we put in, X and Y, those were the values that we sent through. There was the new one that we sent through, and then here's the other one that we put through, which has got the same key as that second one that we put in, but it's got a different value. Okay, so column one is four instead of two, and column two is instead of bar. If we go over to Elasticsearch now and say, what's in the index? It's gonna say, okay, well, we've got four different documents because it sees these as four unique messages, okay? So here's our messages up here in Kafka. And in Kafka, we're saying, well, the key, the kind of like the unique identifier uh, that we decided to, to use as the key for the message here, we've actually got three unique values. And this one here, the fourth one that we put in is actually a new value for an existing key. So if you want to get your data into Elasticsearch in this way, where you can update existing records, you can even do deletes against existing records, then you need to tell the connector to use the key of the Kafka message for the ID on the Elasticsearch side. So let's see how to do that. First off, I'm just gonna get rid of the connector. So we're gonna say, let's uh, drop the connector. Uh, so the connector, show connectors. Here's the connector name, drop connector. Again, this is just a REST call, so Kafka Connect in the background. And then in Elasticsearch, we're going to delete the actual index, because if we don't delete the index, then it just gets confusing. So let's delete the index, because we're about to recreate it. And we delete the index there. OK, that's gone. And now we're going to recreate the connector. I've got the cheat sheet down here on a separate screen. As I say, all of these instructions are on GitHub, so you can try it out for yourself. And in case SQL, we're going to recreate the connector and we're going to change this setting here. Key ignore is now not true, it's false. Don't ignore the key. Use the key of the Kafka message when you set the ID of the target Elasticsearch document. So we create that. We also create it with a new name. So previously it was 01, this is 02. 
The reason for this is that any Kafka Connect sync uh, connector is going to use the name for the connector as the consumer group. And Kafka is really clever. It lets you kind of have consumers which uh, join and leave consumer groups. So if we left it with the same name and recreated it, it would think, well, this is just the same connector as before. And it's already processed those four messages. So it's not going to process them again. Whereas we want to say, create a new connector with different sets of settings and see how it's going to manage these four different messages that we've got on the Kafka topic. So let's remind ourselves what the topic looks like. Uh, print s01 from beginning and print from beginning. There we go. So here are our four messages on the source topic. We've got the connector and we can say show connectors and see if it's running and it is running. And now we go down to Elasticsearch. We say, let's have a look in this index. And in the index, we've got three documents. We've got three documents, not four, because now the ID matches the key of the Kafka message. So here's the key in the Kafka message, X, Y, Z, and then a new value for the same key, Y. So down here, you can see you've got X, Y, Z, and these, uh, the Y key here has got the new value. So column one is four, column two is pfft. And we can see here that matches the new message that came through on that source Kafka topic. So that's what the key ignore uh, setting does. It says, do you want to ignore the key of the Kafka message and just use topic plus partition plus offset as a unique identifier? Um, or do you want to use the key of the Kafka message, which means that when uh, you get a logical update uh, on the Kafka side, an update or a delete, um, you can model that on the Elasticsearch side. So we can write updates over to Elasticsearch that have been made in the source topic, but what about deletes? We've seen how we can set up the keys to be handled correctly so that we can identify a target document in Elasticsearch to make an update to. Well, we can also use those keys to identify a target document to delete. So to delete a message in Kafka or to mark a message as logically deleted, we use a tombstone. And a tombstone is where you've got a key and then a null value. So to do that, I'm going to write one using Kafka Cat. So here's Kafka Cat. Uh, I'm going to write, we're going to produce a message to our test topic, which is called test01. We're going to use dash z, which means send a null across as a tombstone. And then dash k specifies the key separator. So here's our producer. And we're going to specify a key for document or key y. And then the colon was the separator, and then nothing. We hit enter, and that's going to produce a null record. So let's come out of that. Let's just go back into, um, into case equal db and just check what that topic looks like now. So we can say print test01 from beginning. And you can see now we've got um, here's the values as they were before, and here's the actual tombstone message. If we set this message as compacted, that would actually, when compaction runs, delete out the values for that key. But it's not, it's just a bug standard topic. So in this instance, probably we'd be populating it from a source upstream, maybe a database. Maybe we've got a database source connector that if you delete a record in the database, writes a logical deletion, a, a tombstone message into the Kafka topic, and that gets persisted down to Elasticsearch. So let's see that. If we head over to Elasticsearch and we run our REST API call again here, we can see that it's not done it, which is a shame. So if we go back into KCPDB and say show connectors, the connectors are running, but it's not deleted it, which is indeed a shame. So perhaps we need to make a configuration change. So we're going to go and look up the documentation for the Elasticsearch sync connector. When stuff's not working as you think it should do, you go to the documentation. So in the documentation, we can see this. So we're on the uh, Kafka Connect Elasticsearch documentation. It says here, behavior on null values. So how to handle records with a non-null key and value. So tombstone records. So by default, it's just going to ignore it, which is what it's done. But actually, we're going to say set it to delete. We could set it to fail, which means just like fall over. But we don't want it to do that. We want it to delete it. So let's head over here. And we're going to drop our connector. So let's say uh, drop connector. Here, drop connector that one. And then over in Elasticsearch, let's uh, delete that index again. Okay, so we've deleted the index, we've deleted the connector. Now let's create ourselves a new connector. So create connector, and sync connector here. So I'm using Control R to get at my, um, my typing history there. So it's a useful way to bring stuff back up that you've typed before. 
So we'll give it a new name so that it processes the topic afresh. And then down here, we're going to copy in this particular configuration. We're going to say the behavior on no values. And we're going to set that to delete. OK. Create connector. Show connectors. OK, it says it's running. Let's head down to Elasticsearch. So I'm going to gamble here. I've not actually tried this out. What we should do is we should see F2. No, let's actually check our topic and see. Print test from beginning. So how many different keys we've we got? We've got X, Y, Z. OK, so we've got three different keys with varying changes of state. And what we're saying is what I reckon is going to happen is we're going to end up with two because the latest message is a null, is a tombstone for key Y. So when we go to Elasticsearch, I'm hoping we're going to see two documents, one with key X, one with key Z. Let's see if this thing actually works. Now we don't want to delete it. We want to query it. And there we go. It works. So two documents, X and Z, and we've deleted our target document based on the key, and we've had to make that change to the configuration. Uh, let's just remind ourselves what that looked like. We added on this, which by default ignores it. It ignores the tombstones. Uh, and we're saying, actually, if you get a tombstone, if you get a null value, delete the target document. OK, let's now talk about schemas. So when we put data into Elasticsearch, we can tell Elasticsearch what the mapping is for the data we're putting into it. We say this field is this type, this field is that type. Or we can just say to Elasticsearch, here are the values, you figure it out. And Elasticsearch has got this clever thing called the dynamic field mapping, where it figures out what it thinks the data types are, which is kind of useful a lot of the time. If we don't want it to guess, we can also use dynamic templates where we actually explain to it, if it matches this condition, then set it to this type. So the way that we tell Kafka Connect how to interact with this behavior is with this setting here, the schema ignore. If we say schema ignore is false, then it means that we're going to take the schema from our Kafka message and we're going to not ignore the schema. That's kind of like the schema ignore bit. Don't ignore the schema send the schema across to Elasticsearch and use that to define the mapping. If we say we don't want to use the schema from the Kafka message, or if the Kafka message doesn't have a schema, then we say schema ignore equals true, and then the connector will simply take the value and send it over to Elasticsearch. So let's see how that works. So if we're using Avro, we have a schema. Okay, We can choose we'd like to use that schema and send it to Elasticsearch, or we'd like to not and just let Elasticsearch guess, or we're going to use dynamic templates to kind of uh, define it, how we want Elasticsearch to handle those um, the value types. If we're using JSON or CSV or some other format that doesn't have an explicit schema, then we need to make sure that we don't tell the connector to try and use a schema to send across because there isn't one. So I want to walk through now some of the common errors that people see when they get these things kind of like misaligned, because there are a few different permutations. So to start off with, I'm going to create myself a Kafka topic. I'm going to put some JSON data into it. So let's create a KSQL DB stream. It's backed by a Kafka topic called test JSON, and we're storing the data in JSON. So there's no schema to this data. Let's uh, create that. There we go, and uh, we've missed a curl, a uh, quote off there. Okay, so we've created the stream. Now let's put some data into it. So we put that in, and that doesn't work because we're supplying too much data. That works, and let's put another one in as well. And make sure there's enough data there. Okay, so we've put those in, and we can say print test JSON from beginning. And we can see what's in the topic, and it says here's the topic. And it's been stored as uh, JSON. It kind of doesn't know what the key is because it's a null, so it kind of like guesses it might be anything, who knows what. And there's our payload. And we know it's in JSON. So now, let's uh, get a bit more screen space here and do that and clear that. Now let's go and create ourselves a connector. And we're going to use some different settings here. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to bring up here the Kafka Connect log. So uh, Docker Compose Logs, there we go, Kafka Connect. So this is the Kafka Connect worker, and if stuff doesn't work, we'll get to see it at the bottom of the screen here. So first up, I'm going to create a connector. I'm going to say we're going to read from this JSON topic here. I'm going to say schema ignore equals false. So if you're following along closely, we're probably not going to expect this to work because JSON data does not have a schema. And if we're saying don't ignore the schema, i.e. do use the schema, this isn't going to work so well. So we go and create that and say, well, we've created it. 
But if we say show connectors, we're going to go to the REST API in the background. It's going to say there's a warning, and there's a warning because none of the tasks are running, i.e. it's all broken. Let's have a look at the errors in the Kafka Connect worker log. So we're going to page up a little bit here. And the first one that we're going to see is it will say there was an error, and so we're stopping. And then we'll go up a little bit further. And it'll say, okay, we've got some errors. We've got this one here. Failed to deserialize the data for the topic to Avro and an unknown magic byte. And this is everyone's favorite error when it comes to Kafka Connect. What it means is we've inadvertently told Kafka Connect to use the Avro deserializer for the data, but our data is not in Avro. So Kafka Connect says, well, I couldn't deserialize it. And you've told me to deserialize it to Avro, and I'm trying to do that. And when you deserialize data, Using the Avro deserializer, it looks for this magic byte at the beginning of the message, and that's how it works. And it says, well, it's an unknown magic byte because it's just JSON, and that doesn't have this, this necessary magic byte. So what we can do here is if we page up or search back up through the Kafka Connect worker log, what we should see here somewhere is the value converter is, where's the value converter? Here we go, it's set to Avro converter. So whilst we've not specified it in our configuration for the connector, so let's uh, cancel that and go back up to here and make this a bit bigger and page up there. You can see here's our configuration for the connector. We said create the connector and we specified the key converter. We override that to a string. We didn't specify the value converter. So it inherits whatever set in the Kafka Connect worker. Our Kafka Connect worker is set to use the Avro converter by default. And we've not overridden that in the configuration for this connector. So the first thing we need to do is to say, for this particular sync connector here, the topic we're reading from has got data that's serialized into JSON. And we know that because we just saw it when we created it. So the first thing we need to do is to say to the connector, we're going to override the global default, which is in the Kafka Connect worker. And we're going to use the JSON converter instead. So I hope you followed that because I only just about did. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop this connector here because we need to recreate it. So drop connector. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create it again, but we're going to specify the JSON converter. OK, so here's our JSON converter. The default value here is that we're going to have schemas enable. So this is the next little wrinkle along the way. And if I'd not specified this here, it would default to that. So I'm just putting it in explicitly to point out that this is what's going to happen. Go and create that. Let's uh, cancel the output here on the uh, connect worker and see what's happened. So if we say here, show connectors, is it working? It's not working. Oh, no. Let's go down to the connect worker log and see what's actually happening. So again, it says it's stopping. Again, it says there was a problem. What was the problem? There was an error. And now we've got a different error. OK, we've got a data exception. It's another exception to do the converter. JSON converter with schemas enabled requires schema and payload fails. So this is with the support that Kafka Connect has for JSON with an embedded schema. So not JSON schemas, which is like new in uh, Confluent Platform 5.5, but this is the support that's been in uh, Kafka Connect um, for a long time, where you could take a JSON message and embed within it both the schema and the payload. And if you do it like this, you say to Kafka Connect with a converter, schemas enable is true. So it, when you deserialize it, it expects to find both of those in the value part of the message. But in the value part of our message, let's remind ourselves, so if we go and print the topic again, we can say print test JSON from beginning. And all we've got in there is this payload. It's just the value. We don't have the, the, um, the schema and the payload fields that the, um, the converter is expecting. So what we need to do is we need to recreate the connector. So let's go back up to here, cancel that. And we're going to drop the connector again. And we're going to drop a different one. This one here. Okay, and now we're going to recreate it and we're going to change that setting. And now we're going to say, so we're using the JSON converter because we've got JSON data, and we're going to say schemas enable is false. So we're saying when you use the JSON converter and you take the message off the Kafka topic and you deserialize it into JSON, schemas enable equals false, which means the converter will not look for this payload and schema fields within the body. So schemas enables equals false, okay? 
and we set that to run and we see if this is going to work any better. And you can see at the bottom there it hasn't and it looks like the task has failed. So let's page up and we can see it's stopping and what's the problem now? And we keep on going up here and we can see that it says here, okay, work a task due to unrecoverable exception or no. And then down here, we've got the actual root cause. Data exception, cannot infer a mapping without a schema. Now what's happening, we're kind of like getting along the way here. So what's happening here, here is we're saying we've got data that's in JSON. So we're going to read it from the, the topic and we're going to deserialize it as JSON. We don't have an embedded schema. So we say the schema is enable equals false. Don't look for that payload and schema fields within the body of the message. But we've told the connector, don't ignore the schema i.e. when you write the data to Elasticsearch, make sure you take the schema of the document of the message that's coming through and create the mappings on the target using the schema. But the problem is we don't have a schema. We've said there is no schema in this JSON message. So then that's what this message means. We can't infer a mapping without a schema. So what do we do? We go and recreate the connector. So let's uh, create that, let's drop that. And all we're going to do now is we're going to say schema ignore equals true. This is the only thing that we can do because we don't have a schema because we've used JSON with an embedded schema. So schema ignore equals true. Take the data off the topic, deserialize it as JSON. There is no schema within it. So take that payload, send it to Elasticsearch and let Elasticsearch figure out what the mappings are. So now if we say show connectors, we can see it's not working because why wouldn't it? And now we can see what else is happening. The key is used as the document ID and cannot be null. Okay, we weren't expecting that one. So let's drop it again. So drop connector and let's uh, recreate the connector. And this one, this is what I explained earlier about the keys. So we said the key ignore equals false. Take the key from the message, the Kafka message, and use that as the document ID. And this error message here is really good. It says the key is used as the document ID and it can't be null. And when we inserted those messages earlier, let's go and have a look at the uh, print output. Uh, up here, we can see the key of those messages is null. So you can't say use the key of the Kafka message and set that as the document ID because it's null. Well, that doesn't make sense. So now we need to say key ignore equals true. And finally, 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 I think this is hopefully going to work. So show connectors and it says it's running, which is great. And now what we can do here is you can say, Go and have a look at that data that's in the topic, and it's going to be an index called test uh, JSON. And it forces it to lowercase, and there's our data. So you can see it's taken the data, it's sent it across column one, column two. We can see the ID, it's taken the topic name and the partition and the offset because it's not using the key of the Kafka message because we said key, is, key ignore is true because the key is null in the source Kafka message. And if we go and have a look at the mappings, so test JSON, look at the mappings, make that a bit bigger. You can see Elasticsearch has figured out, well, column one, it looks like it's a long value. Column two, it's a text, and we'll make sure that you can kind of analyze it and do all that kind of funky stuff. So that is how you work with schemas in the Elasticsearch sync connector. Schemas ignore equals true, means ignore the schema in the source message if there is one. If there isn't one, then you must set schemas ignore equals true, because we don't have one that we can use. Send the values alone across to Elasticsearch. Let Elasticsearch use dynamic field mapping to figure out what uh, types to use for the mapping. You could use dynamic templates as well to override that and kind of like tell it if it looks like this, then set it as that type. If we do have a schema in the Kafka message, if we're using Avro, if we're using Protobuf, if we're using JSON schemas, you can then say schema ignore is false. Take the schema from the Kafka message and send it across and use that for the mapping in the index that we create. Okay, so let's talk about timestamps. When we've got data in our Kafka topics, then we often have a timestamp element to it that we want to make sure ends up in Elasticsearch mapped correctly as a timestamp field. We might want to make sure that when we're plotting the data out in Kibana, it gets analyzed correctly uh, with a timestamp across the uh, horizontal axis or how we want to use the data. We need to make sure that timestamp field from our Kafka data ends up recognized as such in Elasticsearch. So I'm going to create myself a topic uh, in Kafka uh, using KSQL DB. And this topic itself is going to have some fields within it. It's going to have like just a bit of dummy data here. And then we're going to store a couple of different timestamps in different formats in our Kafka message 
just to show the kind of ways in which people store data in Kafka messages and how we can handle those when we send them to Elasticsearch. So in one example, we're going to store a, a timestamp. Maybe it's like when an order was placed or something. And we're going to store that as an epoch. So we use the big int uh, uh, data type in case equal db. I'm going to store another timestamp, maybe when something was shipped. And we're going to store it as a string. So it's as a varchar field. So it's going to get written to a topic called test02. And we're going to serialize it all as Avro. We've created that stream uh, with the topic underneath it. So let's put some data into it. Just using insert into, I could use any producer. It's just a Kafka topic. So insert into here. So we're going to put a string timestamp in here. And then we're going to use a case equal DB function to work out, given this string timestamp, what is that um, as an actual uh, epoch, so a big int. So we insert that and we insert this. So we've got a couple of rows of data. And I could say print test02 from beginning. And it will show me the data that's in it. So we can see that it's uh, Avro. And we've got an epoch value here. And we've got a string value here. So first off, let's send it over into Elasticsearch without kind of really thinking too much about what we're doing. We'll create ourselves a sync connector. And we're going to say, take the data from this topic here. Um, use the message key from the Kafka message as the document ID um, in Elasticsearch and don't ignore the schema. So take the schema from the Kafka message and use that when we create the mapping in Elasticsearch. So we go and do that. And let's just check that's running. So show connectors and we can see it's running. So if we now go and have a look at our uh, mapping, uh, so for uh, test zero two, sorry, our data first off in Elasticsearch, we can see there's our key. Uh, and then here's our payload. So we've got the epoch and we've got this and they've come across as you would expect as literal values. And we can also have a look at the mapping. So this one here, and it's in test02 index. So let's make that a bit bigger. So we can see now what it's done. It said, well, that's an integer. Um, this is a long, which maps to the big int. And then the string has come across as a text because it's taken the schema that we declared in case equal db when we serialized it to Avro. It's taken that and it's used that to create the mapping in Elasticsearch, which means we don't have a timestamp field, which means if we go over to Kibana, for example, and try and create ourselves an index pattern against that particular index, we say, here's our Elasticsearch index. I'd like to create uh, an index pattern. It'll say this. It'll say there aren't any time fields. So we could look at the data and let's go and have a look at the data. It'll say well, we can create an index pattern and it'll do that, but what we won't be able to do is actually look at it in a time-based manner. So it'll just say, well, here's the data. It looks like that's a number, that's a string, but it doesn't understand it as a date. And we want to get to the point where we can actually take data from the Kafka topic, stream it into Elasticsearch, and actually use the dates as a proper timestamp for analyzing the data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete out uh, that connector that we created. And we do that in case equal DB. So we drop the connector, and then we're going to go and delete um, the particular index uh, from Elasticsearch because we're going to repopulate it now using a different way. So let's drop that from there. And instead of saying use the schema from my document or from my Kafka message, we're going to say to the connector, send the data to Elasticsearch, let Elasticsearch figure out what it thinks the data types are. So we're going to say schema ignore is true. So ignore the fact that there's a schema in the source message, or if there isn't a schema in the source message, that's kind of like what we have to set it to. We're using Avro, so there is a schema, but we're saying, well, ignore that schema, send the data to Elasticsearch, let Elasticsearch use dynamic field mapping to figure out what it thinks the data types are. So we create that. We're using a different connector name because otherwise Kafka Connect would think, well, this is the same as before, and I've already sent those two messages, so we're not going to send any, uh, we're not going to send them again. Um, so we give it a new connector name, which it sends over those, those messages from the topic again. And now we go to Elasticsearch and we say, well, have we got the data? And it says, yep, we've got the data. It looks exactly the same as before because it is the same as before. But if we go have a look at the mapping, you can see what it's done with it. So it said, well, this column one, it's an integer, we map it as a long. This epoch here, it's a big int, we map it as a long. This string here, the value in that field, Elasticsearch said, well, that kind of looks like a date, so let's map it as a date. And if we go over to Kibana and go down to our index mappings, sorry, index patterns, and if we take this test02 and 
delete that so that we can recreate it and see what it thinks about the uh, timestamp fields that are present. So let's go and create ourselves an index pattern for test02. And do that. And it says, okay, you've got a time field. So it's saying the, the string based time field, because it looks like a time, a, a timestamp, when we sent it to Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch said, well, I reckon that's a time field, so we'll map it as that, which means we can now use it um, for things like Gibana or kind of like time based analytics that we're doing in Elasticsearch. It'll create that index pattern. And when we go and poke around the data using the discover view, it means that it'll actually plot it out using time. And you can actually um, summarize it up and look at it over time because this field here is an actual timestamp. So this one here, we can see it's a, a timestamp value. The epoch one, it's still just a, a, a long value, a big int. So this works great if we're storing our values as strings in Kafka topics, and that string matches the format that Elasticsearch uses for kind of like guessing that I reckon this is a date field. But what happens if we want to use that epoch field, this order timestamp, as our timestamp field for analysis? Or what happens if the ship uh, TS uh, string format that we're using doesn't match the format that Elasticsearch expects it to be in. If it's a different type of date formatting that we're using, that Elasticsearch doesn't recognize automatically to be able to do this thing uh, for us. So let's go through a couple of other options. We're going to drop out the connector again and recreate it. So up here, drop the connector, down there, drop the index. And now we're actually going to explicitly tell Elasticsearch this field is a timestamp. So we're going to create it like this, and we're going to use what's called a single message transform. So single message transforms, they're part of the Kafka Connect framework, and they let us modify messages as they pass through the Connect pipeline. So in the case of a sync connector, we read a message from Kafka, it gets deserialized. Then we optionally apply single message transforms to it, one or more, and then it gets sent down from the sync connector down to the target. So here we're creating a connector. It's going against the test topic. We're saying don't ignore the schema, i.e. us, the connector, we're going to tell Elasticsearch what the mapping types are. And then here we're applying a transform. The transform is the timestamp converter. And we're saying this field here is a timestamp. So we go and create that. We go down to Elasticsearch and say, tell me, show me about the data. Yep, we've got the data. Let's go and have a look at the mappings. And now this time, the mappings look a bit different. Column one's an integer, we know that. The shipment timestamp is a string, and it's come across as a text, because we said, don't ignore the schemas. Schema ignore is false. So the connector is going to tell Elasticsearch, this field is, it's a varchar on our side, so it's a, a text field on your side. But this one here, the epoch field, we said, well, we want to set that as a timestamp. So Kafka Connector said to Elasticsearch, this field is a timestamp. So it's mapped it correctly as a date field. And if we go over to Kibana and check this out, so now we say test 02, use that uh, Elasticsearch index, next step. So now it says the time field, field, time field that's available to us is the order timestamp, which we're storing as, a, as an epoch. So you can store your timestamps in different ways, and we configure Kafka Connect Sync Connector to send them across uh, according to the data types that we want to use. There's another way we can do it. So depending on how you're storing your data and how you want to handle your data mappings, you can choose these different ways of doing it. So I want to show you all the different permutations that we've got. So we've said we can either let Elasticsearch just look at the fields and guess and hope that it figures out that this string here is a timestamp and use that correctly. We can force it and tell it this uh, big int here, this long field, is actually an epoch. So interpret it as such and use that as your timestamp. What we can also do is we can say we're going to use a dynamic template so that when the fields come through from uh, Kafka Connect into Elasticsearch, it says if it matches this pattern, then map it as a date. So to do this, we're going to create ourselves a dynamic template in Elasticsearch first. So we've dropped the connector, we've dropped the index. This doesn't work, I don't think, if you've got if the index already exists. I think this is when it's creating the index. Although you could test it out for yourselves and see. But we're going to create ourselves a template here. The template name doesn't matter. And we're going to say map. We've got a dynamic template here. So match anything that's got underscore ts underscore in the field name and map it as a date. 
I guess that's kind of dangerous if you've got lots of different fields and you don't want to try and force everything into a date. You could kind of list, list, list out the literals if you wanted to, but I'm just going to use that for the moment because it works. And now we're going to create ourselves the connector yet again, again using a different name so that we reprocess the data that's in the topic already. And this field's important because we're saying schema ignore is true. We're saying ignore the schema that we have on the Kafka side or that we maybe don't have if we're using JSON. Let Elasticsearch guess or figure out the field mapping types itself. And because we've created this template here, this dynamic template, it's going to use that to inform it when it creates those field mappings. So we go and create that and we go and check that we've got the data there. And it says, yep, we've got the data there. And now we go and have a look at the mappings over here. And it says, okay, this looks a little bit different this time. So within this index, we've got the dynamic template, which we defined. And then these two fields here are both date. The reason they're both date is they both have this underscore TS underscore in there, which matches the pattern that we defined here. And Elasticsearch said, okay, it matches that. So these fields therefore become a date type, which means when we go to back to Kibana, let's uh, do this and refresh, we can use either of them because perhaps we want to analyze our data based on different time fields. So if it's a time field, you want to be able to map it as such. And then when it comes to analyzing it and using that data in Elasticsearch, then you choose which field to use. The last thing I want to show you when it comes to timestamps is how you can actually use the timestamp of the Kafka message itself in Elasticsearch. Because the payload that we've been working with so far, if we just remind ourselves, so describe test02, We've got various different fields. We've got the actual schema, the main schema that we defined. It's got a column of whatever. We've got two different timestamp fields. These are the ones that we've been working with back and forth and casting them and so on. But within a Kafka message, you also have a key. And we've talked already about how you manage keys and document IDs and so on. You also have this metadata, which sits within every Kafka message of a timestamp. The timestamp of a Kafka message, it can be set explicitly by the producer, and the producer can kind of say the timestamp of this message is whatever, or you can configure the brokers such that the message arrives on the broker and gets given the timestamp of when it arrived on the broker, so like a, a processing timestamp. But that timestamp is useful, and it's embedded within the Kafka message. In fact, sometimes you don't even need a timestamp as part of your value payload because you actually have the same timestamp in effect as part of the metadata. Anyway, you've got metadata in every Kafka message for the timestamp. Sometimes you want to get that metadata and expose it out into your target system like Elasticsearch. So let's do that. Let's go and create ourselves a new connector. Let's drop the existing one like so. Let's drop this existing one down here. I'm also going to get rid of my uh, dynamic template just that we're starting from scratch. So we're going to use this one here and we're going to delete that one there. Okay, so we're kind of like back to square one with this. And now we're going to say, let's create ourselves another new connector. All of this code, by the way, is on GitHub. I'm kind of copying it from a different screen, which is why I'm looking down. But it means that you can go and have a look at it and try it all out for yourselves. Now we're taking the data from the same topic as before. We're saying, don't ignore the schema. Use the schema that we give you uh, from Kafka Connect. And we're saying extract the timestamp. So it's a single message transform. Extract timestamp is simply the label. We could call it foo if we wanted to. The type of this transform is insert field. We're going to insert a field into the value part of the message. And what we're going to insert is the timestamp. So the time, this timestamp bit here is a special part of that uh, operator. You can also insert things like the topic name or just some literal text if you want to. We're going to insert the timestamp we're going to insert it into a field called message timestamp. So we set that running. And now if we go over to here and say, let's have a look at the data, we've actually got different data. We've got no data because something's gone wrong. Let's show connectors. Okay, it says it's running. Why is that not working? It's not working because I think I've reused a connector name because we created that one as D. So this one should definitely be E or something different. So because what happened was, let me show you, here's my history. So up here, 
we created that sync connector, and this is when we were using the uh, dynamic templates. And then we said, drop it. Okay, we dropped it and got rid of it, and then we've just created it again. So we've reused that connector name, and because we've reused it, Kafka Connect says, well, it's the same connector. And it does the sensible thing, which says, well, I've already processed this data for this particular connector. I'm not going to reprocess it because you'll end up with duplicates in your target system, maybe. So what we need to do is we need to drop the connector. And we'll do that like this. Drop connector. And then we'll simply say create the connector again, but use a different suffix. OK, let's see if that's worked. So we've created the connector, show connectors, and this time it says it's running. And this time, if we're going to have a look at Elasticsearch, we've got some data and we've got some new data. So we've got the key, as before, is set to the key of the, message, of the uh, Kafka message. We've got column one, we've got the order timestamp, we've got the ship uh, timestamp. We've also got the message timestamp. Okay, so that message timestamp, it's come across as an epoch value. And if we're going to have a look at the mappings for that particular topic, we can see here that the message timestamp has come across as a date because that date uh, field has come across as a timestamp type from our single message transform. So now if we head over into Kibana and refresh that the field names that are available, we've now got the message timestamp. We don't have the other two because I got rid of the changes I made in the previous step with the dynamic templates and so on. So it's gone back to the beginning, which is taking the literal data types from the Kafka message, which is a big int, a long, and a varchar, which becomes a text field. But the message timestamp, we extracted out into a timestamp uh, data type. So that got pushed across because we said the, the schemas ignore equals false setting. So they use the schema from the Kafka side when we push it over to Elasticsearch. So now we can use the timestamp of the particular Kafka message. I'm going to create the index pattern. So always bear in mind, your data has got different timestamps. You've got a timestamp when it was created or updated or when it landed in Kafka or when we processed it or whatever. So if we set, change this here and have a look at the data overall time, you'll see the timestamp associated with these particular values is from the 1st of May, which is when I'm recording this. If we go and have a look at the timestamp within the data, like the ship timestamp is from February, that epoch, if we resolved it out, I think is February as well. But we've got different timestamps in the data, and we can use the Kafka Connect Sync Connector to identify those different timestamps as we want to and set the data types correctly when it lands in Elasticsearch. So when we send documents through from a Kafka topic down to Elasticsearch, the connector will take the topic name and use it as the basis for the index that it creates in Elasticsearch. If it's an uppercase name, it will force it down to lowercase because that's what's required in Elasticsearch. But we can see here, we've taken a topic called test2 and it's pushed it down through into Elasticsearch. We can list out the indices uh, and it shows we've got a test2 index in Elasticsearch. But what if we want to change that target index name? Well, this is where single message transforms come in again. We can use the single message transform that modifies the topic name because the topic name is used by the connector to define the target index name. So let's take this example here. And instead of test02, we're going to replace the uh, test part of the name with a different piece. So let's move that down here and clear the screen. And here, we're going to say we've got the same topic, test02, but we're going to use a single message transform called the regex router. So this lets you specify a regular expression. So here's our regular expression. And what the regular expression means is take anything followed by 0, 02, and that anything is captured. That's what the, uh, the brackets are. They're a, a capture group. So test 0, 02 is going to match that test bit within the brackets. And then the 0, 02 is the anchor piece outside of the brackets. So we capture here the, uh, the test uh, string. And then in the replacement part of the single message transform, we say use this literal here and then dollar one for the first capture group, which is this. Sounds more complex than it actually is. We run that um, and we check it's running. Ooh, we don't do that. We say it's sure connectors and it says it's running. And if we go down to Elasticsearch and we use the API to have a look at the, look at the uh, indices. We can see we've got the existing test 02 that was there already. And now we've got one called foo dash test. So foo is the hard coded literal here in the dash. And then dollar one is the part of the capture group that we specified in our regular expression. 
So if you want to do things like change an environment name or drop a prefix or add in stuff like that, you can do that using the regex router. Another thing that we want to do with indices is sometimes we want to do timestamp based partitioning. So we want to have the same base index name, but append maybe the year and month or year, month and day uh, to help with how we organize the data. So we can also do that. And for this, we're going to use a different uh, single message transform. This one's called the timestamp router. So all of these you can find over in the documentation. So here you've got the timestamp router. Uh, there's the regex router that we use. So all sorts of different transformations that you can use when you're working with Kafka Connect. And remember, single message transforms, they're just part of the Kafka Connect framework. So if you're using a properly written connector, it will support single message transforms just plugged into it. So the same way we plug in a converter to say we want to use Alvaro or JSON, and we plug that together with a connector. You can also plug in these particular single message transforms and use them with any Kafka Connect pipeline that you're building. So let's head over here and we're going to create ourselves another connector. So this one is going to use the timestamp router. And this is going to say, we'll take the timestamp of the Kafka message, so the Kafka message timestamp, that piece of metadata that we talked about before, and we're going to append it to the topic name. When we're creating single message transforms, the transform just has a label which has the configuration associated with it. So you can use something which is kind of like useful like this, but it's just a, a label. It doesn't actually matter what it's called. So that's the value there, which we then repeat in the configuration. And we say, well, it's got a type, which is the timestamp router. And then different transforms have got different types of configuration. So this one needs a topic.format. And here we say, well, take the topic name and add on the timestamp. How do we want to format the timestamp? Well, that's another piece of configuration for the connect for the uh, transformation. So here's that configuration. And we say, well, we'd like to add on the timestamp in this particular format. Set that running, check that it's working. And now down here in Elasticsearch, have a look at the indices. And now we've got the one that we created before, another one we created before, and now we've got this one here. So take the topic name and append to it the date of the Kafka message. And so we sent it through on the 1st of May, so that gets written in there. If we add in new messages onto that Kafka topic on the 2nd of May, we'll get a new target index in Elasticsearch, but it's all coming from the same source topic. And we can combine these transformations as well. So we can say, well, I'd like to modify the name. So instead of test02, I want to call it foo-test, but I also want to append the timestamp to it as well. So it looks like this. We say, let's take the uh, index name transformation and we'll use the timestamp transformation. So first we change it the, using the regex as we saw before. So take the test part of the topic name and uh, append that to this hard-coded literal here, the foo, and then, oops. So append that to the foo, and then we've got the timestamp router saying take the topic name, and at this point in the transformation chain, the topic name is now this foo-test, and then append to that the timestamp in this different format and set that running and say show connectors and check it's working. And then down here, we go into Elasticsearch, use the API and say, what indices have we got? And we've got this one here, foo-test-timestamp. So you can modify the target index names in Elasticsearch using the single message transforms like the regex router, like the timestamp router. So let's finish up with this tour of the Elasticsearch sync connector by talking about when things go wrong. How do you handle messages that are coming through from a topic that maybe are badly formed or don't fit the uh, format that's been accepted by the sync connector? So I'm going to dive down into the uh, console now, uh, leaving KSQL DB behind. We're just going to create ourselves some uh, data using Kafka Cat. Kafka Cat's one of our favorite Kafka tools. You can use it as a producer, as a consumer, as a troubleshooter. It's a kind of Swiss Army knife of awesomeness for Kafka. And so here we're going to use it as a producer, sending data to this topic called test03. And I'm also going to run a second one of these, which is going to be here, and it's going to be a consumer. So we can see everything that we send to the topic also being echoed out to the screen. So there's my consumer. Here's my producer up here. And we're going to produce ourselves a message onto the topic. It's just going to be a very, very simple lump of JSON. And it's got a key on it here. So Kafka Cat lets you send keys. So dash K means there's a key. Colon is the separator that we're using. So one is my key. There's my separator. And then here's my value. So send that across. And we can see in the producer down here, there's my key. Uh, here's my value. And you can also see the topic partition and offset just because that's kind of useful. Now let's create ourselves a very simple source, uh, sync connector using this data. 
So we'll shove that up out of the way and this one as well and create ourselves a bit more space. And now we're just going to use the REST API of Kafka Connect directly. So I showed you before all that stuff, I was using KSQL DB. That was simply a wrapper on top of the Kafka Connect REST API. It's all Kafka Connect under the cuddlers. It's just that now I'm going to use curl to call that REST API directly. Elasticsearch Sync Connector, here's my topic, and we run that. And that's going to go and create the connector. And if I go and have a look at the data that's sat in the topic, test 03, we can see that data has come through. And that's kind of as it should do. What happens though, if I go and write a message onto the topic that's badly formed? So at the moment we're using the JSON converter. So if I go and kind of put something on the topic like this, and I kind of like I forget to do something and I kind of send that. So now we've got some data on the topic that's badly formed JSON, that's not good news. And if we go down here and we can have a look at the uh, status of the connector, and we can see here that it's failed. So I'm using the REST API. Uh, again, with a bit of bash magic around it to format it nicely, we've got the sync connector, the connector itself, the logical, logical entity is running, but the task within it has failed. Let's find out why it's failed. Go and have a look at the logs. The logs are always where we're going to go. There's also a REST API for finding out the status directly, but I kind of just have the habit of looking at the logs. So in the logs, we can see that the uh, thing's uh, stopping, the task is aborted, and if we page up, and page up some more, we can see this here. So we've got a data exception, an error converting byte to Kafka Connect data, fail to do uh, serialization error, blah, blah, blah. And here, so the, um, the JSON parser that Kafka Connect uses is expecting to a double quote to start the field name. And if we look at this here, so that's the thing that we sent across, and it's saying here, the unexpected character is K, and it was actually expecting a double quote to start the field name, which is what valid JSON would do. Here's valid JSON, you've got a quote starting the field name, and the field name's A. Here's the JSON I sent across, and it's just like a lump of gibberish like that. So it's bad JSON, and it's crashed the connector. The connector said, well, I can't read that, so I'm going to stop. Kafka Connect has got different error handling characteristics, depending on where something goes wrong in the pipeline. So here, the problem lies in the deserialization. It's at the converter stage. And converters, if we remember, they're these pluggable things that are separate from the actual connector itself. So at this stage, we're at the converter stage, and the converter has said, like, I can't read that, and so therefore the whole thing stops. But Kafka Connect as a framework supports being able to continue processing if you hit problems at certain stages. So if you hit problems during the converter or the transformation, you can tell Kafka Connect, this is how I want you to handle it. We'll talk later about how we deal with problems in the actual connector itself, like connecting out to the end system and various errors in the API there. So now we go and create ourselves a new version of the same connector. And we can clear that there and just create it here. I'm using the put uh, API um, because you can then just override the existing configuration. We don't have to delete the connector and recreate it like we were doing in KSQL DB previously. I just do a put, it creates it if it's not there, it updates it if it is. And what we're adding in is this. We're saying the errors tolerance is all. So by default, it's none. By default, it'll just stop. And sometimes you want a data pipeline to do that. If we get data that we're not expecting, that's not well formatted, then stop because we need to check it out. But sometimes we want to say, well, it's like it's fine, let the good stuff pass on through, and that's what this does. So the tolerance is all, and then we're going to log those errors, and we're going to include the messages associated with them. So we create that, and if we go and have a look now uh, in Elasticsearch, we can see we've still got that one document there. Um, but if we go and have a look at the status of the connector, we can see that it's still running. And that's good, because if we go up here and we send another message over, so let's send the message for a new key, and it's going to have the same field, which is called A, and we'll give it a different value like that. Uh, two. So we send some good JSON over. You can see it's arrived in the topic there. And if we go down to Elasticsearch here, we can see that's made it over into Elasticsearch. If we hadn't set this um, error handling in place, then the pipeline would have stopped because the, the connector had stopped. And if we'd restarted the connector, it would have stopped again because it would have tried to reprocess the data that it hadn't processed yet. And it would have got stuck on this message here. It would have said, well, I've not processed this message, so I need to process it, try and process it, well, I can't, and so it would stop. 
So setting this um, uh, option here to ignore the errors, uh, lets the pipeline continue processing, and it just drops this one out and it just ignores it. It writes it out to the log file. We don't always want to just like ignore these messages or write them to a log file that we have to hope that someone notices. We can also use what's called a dead letter queue. And this is an idea of saying, well, the good stuff passes on through, the stuff that we can't process, we're going to write out to a separate topic, our dead letter queue. And that separate topic we can then consume because it's just a Kafka topic and process and monitor as we want to. So let's set that up. We're going to go and amend the pipeline and we're going to set this in place. So again, we're just recreating the existing connector and we've got our previous settings here, the errors tolerance. And now we're saying with a dead letter queue, write it out to this particular topic. If we hit an error, deserializing the data or running a single message transform against it, just these certain stages of the Kafka Connect pipeline. And we're going to include information about the error in the header of the Kafka message that we write to the dead letter queue. So we've created that. Now let's go and send another bogus message. So this one's going to look like this. And it's going to look like kind of that. And we do this and we send that. So that's a bad message. We're going to see that it won't actually go to Elasticsearch, okay, which we wouldn't expect it to because it's badly formed. And we should hopefully see the connector is still running, which it is. So the pipeline hasn't failed. But if we go and have a look, let's go and create ourselves a new window. And if we go and have a look at the actual topic itself that we've created, uh, using Kafka Cast because it's just a, a Kafka topic we can consume from it, we'll see that on that topic we've actually got the data. So here we're formatting the output, we're saying write the key and then write the value and then write the headers. So here is the topic name, there's the key, there's the value, and then here are the headers. In the headers there's all this information. So we've got stuff like the topic it came from, the partition, the offset, and then here's the actual error, converting byte to Kafka Connect data fail due to serialization error, and there's the actual stack trace. We can see down here, we're expecting a colon, and that's the actual offending entity. So messages that we can process, we can't deserialize, we can't run a transformation against, they can get routed to a dead letter queue without actually breaking the pipeline. All of this is covered in an article I wrote here. It's on the Confluent blog, uh, Conf uh, Kafka Connect uh, Deep Dive Error Handling and Dead Letter Queues. And it goes through all of these options that I'm showing you here. And it also shows you down here at the bottom an important table. So this tells us which things are and aren't handled by the Kafka Connect framework and which things need to be handled by the connector itself. So things to do with writing down or reading from specific technology with which we're integrating, those are handled by the connector itself. So let's look at an example of this. If we remind ourselves the data that we've put into Elasticsearch, it looks like this. And we can also look at the mapping. We can say, show me the mapping for this particular index. And it says, well, it's got one field and it's a long data type. So if we go and send some data to that topic that's valid JSON, okay, so let's send some JSON across and it's got a field name of A, but we don't send it as a long compatible number. Let's just send it as a string. Okay, so put a string in there. So this is valid JSON. This isn't going to fail at the deserialization stage, and we've not got a single message uh, transform that we're running. We send that across. We can see it in the topic. We should see down here that the status of the connector, it still says it's running, but if we go and have a look at the actual logs, We'll see down here that we've got an error in writing it to Elasticsearch. Okay, the bulk request failed because it's a um, an input string. It's not a valid uh, type for that particular field. And now, if we go back to the topic and we try and write some valid data, we'll see what the impact of this is. So here's a valid message. Here's the invalid message. Here's a valid message. We we'll try and send that. And if we go down here and have a look at what's in Elasticsearch we'll see that we don't have that message. So even though we've sent a, message, a valid message here, we don't have that in Elasticsearch because that invalid one is bugging up the pipeline. The pipeline is basically stalled behind that one because you can't get through because the connector says, well, I can't write that one, so I can't process the rest of it. So this is where this uh, last setting comes in, which is where we say, uh, if you've got a malformed document, then just ignore it or write a warning. So let's change the connector definition. And we say here, behavior on malformed documents, just write a warning. So we do that. And if we go and check that the connector is running, it says it's running. If we have a look at the logs, 
we're going to see a warning down at the bottom which says, well, this is malformed. But if we go and have a look at the actual data that's in Elasticsearch uh, here, we can see that that document now has come through. So we've got the valid message from the source topic has made it through to Elasticsearch. The one which is malformed, we're trying to send through a, a string value into a, a number field, that just gets ignored or it's get written to the log file, but it doesn't actually break the pipeline for us. So that's Kafka Connect, streaming data from a Kafka topic down to Elasticsearch. I hope it's been useful. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Remember to go and check out the Confluent YouTube channel as well. Check out the Confluent blog for lots more Kafka Connect and Kafka and Confluent related blogs.